Okay, here's a quick video illustrating making a couple of uh, brief indices using our current data set. Um, so, in my uh, working data file, I have uh, added two variables at the end that are um, adding up. The first one is people's computer experience, how much they use a desktop or laptop computer when they were younger. And then the other one is asking about their current computer use and asks about desktop and not laptop. I'm not sure why that isn't there. And then how much they use document, uh, Excel, or PowerPoint type uh, software. Um, and let's see. So, L, M. Oh, yeah. So this one is just adding two adjacent variables in a range of L to M. And then this one is adding um, one variable and then a range of three variables in a row, AJ through AL. Um, and the expectation is that there should be a, a positive correlation between prior computer use or experience and current uh, computer use. Um, and we might imagine that to be the case, but we might want to look into that. So. In order to look at that more closely, what you're going to want to do is copy um, these indices and then paste special into another data set, which is what I did right here. Um, actually, I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab my little fancy highlighting here. I'm going to copy this and put it at the top so we have the nice colors. Like this. Um, and so then if we make this, let's see, a scatter plot out of that, we're, um, let's see, I'll just go ahead and cop or uh, highlight these and then go to insert uh, and then scatter plot and just click that. And this is the default sort of presentation of a scatter plot using this data right here. Um, we don't need this little side guy here, so I'll delete it, make more space for our plot. And we can see that the default is this blue color and these kind of rhomboid or angled squares, and they're solid. Um, that's not as good as um, using these hollow circles, so you can change that by uh, selecting a point and then right-clicking it and then format data series. And then, let's see, we can go to marker options, let's see, you choose built-in, and then we can change it, and I like the circles the best. And I like them to be a little bit bigger, like that. And if we close that, we can see that now they look like that. But because they're solid, you can't see as easily how they're overlapping. So let's um, change this again. Format data series, marker fill. Let's go with no fill. Let's, uh, okay, that's good. Um, and so now that looks pretty good, except for because um, the values that went into these take kind of a limited range because they're these ordinal variables at these levels, we have a lot of points that might be overlapping with each other. You can kind of tell there might be several points right here. Um, and so this is, I made this earlier, and the only difference between these two plots really is um, just the title. And so I, I retitled this one. Um, but then there's something we can do which is called jittering, which we can um, add a little bit of random noise to our values so that the points don't overlap as much. And so that's what I did right here. And so you can see that um, this cell here, E4, is equal to B4 plus a small random number. And the, the function for making a random number that ranges between 0 and 1 is rand and then parentheses with nothing in them like that. So actually that's a good amount of jitter to add. We could alter the amount of jitter by um, putting in a parenthesis here and then multiplying this by some sort of um, uh, value. So we could multiply it by 0.5, so we would make the jitter less, like that. And then um, every time you change the um, sheet, it updates the jitter. So we could fill that down, and these would have half as much jitter as they currently do. Um, and then, so then this one right here is a plot of the two jittered columns. And we can see, and actually, so if we change anything, it'll slightly change the location of the plots. But what we can see is what we suspected is that there's a lot more points right through here, and there are, right? Because now they're jittered, they're in slightly different locations. So if you have 
data that is um, similarly uh, constrained to certain points in a grid, you can throw a little bit of jitter on them and make them so they don't overlap as much and you can see them better. We're doing this just for visualizing, not for running any statistics on this. Um, we're just uh, looking at it and seeing where most of the points seem to be. And our earlier suspicion that there might be some sort of um, positive relationship between these two uses of computer, the past and the current, it's probably true. It's probably a very slight upward uh, uh, positive correlation there. Anyways, hope that's helpful.